It's just the game is such a weak mindset. Welcome back, everybody. Here we go. I just I, I wanted to stay at that screen just to remind myself that I never want to feel the pain of losing ever again. Anyway, uh, I'm over it. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, I don't. It, I don't know. I hope people didn't take it the wrong way when I said I don't think I'm living to be 100. That was not meant as like I have a death wish. I'm also one of those people, and we're like getting right back into the banter apparently. But I'm also one of those people. And people say, like, oh, like, living forever sounds like a curse. I gotta be honest with you, I never really looked at it like that. Hold on, I think Dark Arts is... I think that's the hotness, man. We gotta give it a shot. Even though I love a, uh... Even though I love an Angel Room, I'd love to take this. I'd love to take Dark Arts, please. Love to take Dark Arts. I don't dream of being immortal. I'm not, like, a Silicon Valley, um... CEO that is like, you know, I'm so important. I'd love to be preserved in in ice for like my whole life or whatever uh, Or after I die so that maybe I could be resurrected one day I'm not I'm not that kind of sicko, but uh, at the same time If someone was like hey if you drink this blue juice, you'll live forever I'd probably be like yeah, why not send it? It never that never scared me I mean like it depends I I think the truly scary thing of immortal life would be like, you know, not just like, would you live forever if you didn't die of like, that you'd never get diseases or die of natural causes, but like, you know, if a meteor hits you, you'd still die, or if you didn't eat or something like that, you still died. That's one thing. Like, if you were so immortal that like, I wouldn't want to survive, um, like the end of the human race and then just be out there in outer space by myself. Like, I think at that point I'd be like, you know what? Dormammu, could you just, like, freaking finish me off here or whatever? But it, when, whenever people were like, oh, I wouldn't want to live so long, like, to see all your friends and family die, that would be, like, the worst thing in the world. I'd be like, yeah, you know, it'd probably be, like, sad. But even if it took you, like, a couple centuries to get over with, you know, then you just get back on the horse. <laughs> I don't, maybe people take offense to that. Maybe they'd be like, really? If your family died, you would ever get over them? Well, I don't know. What do you want me to say? Are you, maybe it's like, how important do you think you are? Do you think that if, if you died, someone in your life should be inconsolable forever to the extent that they also want to die? That's so, like, narcissistic. I hate to bring it back to the food poisoning. But, like, I, I know some people out there are weird with their spouses. They're like, you know, if you die, I'll never remarry or something like that. If I, if I die, you better not remarry. Or if you do, you've got to wait, uh, I don't know, 36 months before you even start. They get into like weird minutia like that. When I had the, the infections and like it, it never like looked like I was going to die. But there was a time where I was like, like I'm feeling really, really bad and it has not gotten better for a while. Like, it was not, like, a normal illness, at least until the antibiotics came in. But I was like, Kate, if I die, you better remarry, like, stat. <laughs> you've been... Not, not to say she doesn't pull her weight, because she does. But, like, I'm like, you've been living high on the hog. You can't go back. You gotta, you gotta get back out there ASAP. I'm not saying she couldn't provide for herself. I'm just saying, like... Well, I don't know. Like, it's good... It's a rude awakening. Not everybody out there is as nice as uh, yours truly right here. As you can tell from this incredibly problematic line of reasoning I'm going through right now. We don't have that kind of uh, situation. Like, if I die prematurely... The only reason I would say, like, I, I wouldn't want my wife to find someone else is like I would want to almost put like a like a two year like no marriage clause into my will not to stop her from being happy but just to make sure she's not marrying you know some freaking dirt bag just because she's on the rebound or something like that right like I don't want her if I were to die prematurely I don't want her to just date like the first Joe Schmo that she happens to ask her out to dinner you know, right after my wake or something like that. Like, I want, I want her to play the field a little bit. I want her to sample everything at the buffet before she orders off the a la carte menu. 
Because, you know, it would be some of my assets that would be... Oh, I should have gone there. I forgot I'd already been to the deal with the devil, so I'm not really preserving a precedent. Some of my assets are going to be paying for your lives going forwards. I don't want some freeloader. I want it to be another, uh, another guy that has a certain strength of character himself. Mostly, I would just want her to be happy. But I would, if possible, like from the great beyond, I would love to vet the choice. I, don't, I realize that I wouldn't be able to say, like, yes or no and have it, like, be enforceable. But I, you know, I would at least like to be consulted, I guess is what I'm trying to say. If you could get a medium of the Long Island variety and uh, maybe consult. And I, again, it's just it's a non-binding arbitrage or arbitration. I would just give you my, my feedback. I think a lot of people don't want their spouse to, like, you know, remarry when they die because they're, like, worried about being, like, a jealous ghost or something like that. It's not it for me. You know, I'm dead. Live your life. I just want to make sure, like, he's not a, he's not a freeloader. <laughs> also, I want to make sure he's not a fan. Ooh, gross. Can you imagine if she, if I died and my wife married a, a fan of mine from when I was alive? That's like a Netflix horror show waiting to happen. No offense to the fans out there. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. No, thank you. Anyway. Yeah, so, like, long story short, I think it wouldn't be the... I don't aspire to live forever, but if somebody came to me with the blue Powerade and was like, hey, you could, like, live forever if you drink this, but, like, make a decision quick because I got something going on in half an hour, I'd be like, yeah, give me a sip. Why not? And then I think you just hope it doesn't go wrong in like a Brendan Fraser in bedazzled sort of way, you know? You just hope that there's like na nature doesn't have like a sense of humor or something like that. And be like, you can live forever, but a meteor is going to destroy the earth in two days. Psych! Don't you seem owned right now? Like, I'm not a narcissist like that. Sincerely. I don't think that they would blow up the earth just despite me for making a decision. Some people really think they're the main characters. You know what I wonder sometimes? If you're a person who believes in jinxes, how do you ever have a conversation about anything? It's so annoying. Check the weather forecast. Oh, 0% chance of rain tomorrow. Don't jinx it. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just shut up about anything. What do you want to eat for dinner? Oh, don't jinx it. I just hope we're going to eat dinner tonight. How was your day today? Don't jinx it. It's not over yet. Get a life. It's not all about you. What is, like... I think I, I'm genuinely going off here but I also think like I would like to nominate don't jinx it as like the most annoying uh meaningless line in con in conversation that just kills my desire to continue talking it's good it's hard to take the mantle from that's what she said which has been it's been winning that contest uh, running unopposed for like a decade now But I, you know, the, the hardest choices require the strongest wills. I hate hearing don't jinx it, man. It dri drives me crazy. Because you can say it about anything. As we've just illustrated in this five paragraph essay. Good boss fight. Oh, don't jinx it. Uh, yeah, but you just like... I don't, did, everyone's out there living their life. You think the rain's gonna... It's gonna start to rain just to spite you? You're you're a bank teller. Like no disrespect. But like it's not that you're not that important. It's that none of us is that important that the universe is listening in and they're going to make it rain tomorrow just because you planned on going to the beach. I know it seems like that sometimes, but that's cuz we're all crazy. That's cuz we're all insane. There's something wrong with the human mind, okay? Okay, we want this. I'm very for this. Although you've been nerfed recently, and by recently I mean like a year ago, right? Still, still happy to have you. Still feeling good. This should be a better run. I've returned to form after a rare loss. This is my first Isaac loss since like, I don't even know, like April? It's been a long time. I'm like the opposite of Gabby J. Please let me lose. I've, I've won so much I forgot what losing feels like. I don't even remember what this does. Let's just use it. It'll be fun. Confirmed. I had, can't, can't you see I'm having fun? We are laughing. 
I'm glad I took Dark Arts. It's a little bit of a different flavor for the run. It's definitely, it's, it's more my tempo. So anyway, that's basically what's going on. You know what's crazy? Is like... Writing a will. Everybody always talks about how important it is to have a will. And I know that it is important. But as a lay person, it seems like it shouldn't be that important. <laughs> Not like a, a getting your affairs in order. Okay, that makes sense, you know? Like, before I die, if I was... And I, this is a macabre episode, but I don't think I'm going anywhere anytime soon. But I definitely want to make sure, if I know that it's coming, I want to cancel all of my Twitch subscriptions. Because I don't want my credit card still getting billed for, like, eight years until the expiration date after I die. And then, like, it, everybody I've ever subscribed to is getting eight years of free subscriptions without actually having to put out good content. Because that's just... It goes against my principles, okay? But like a will is like, my mom especially has been on me. You know, another thing that I know I should do, but I'm like, I'm busy. And she's like, it's important. And I'm like, I know, but I'm busy. But like, don't you want your family to be taken care of when you're dead? Yeah, but like, couldn't like a judge just sort of like infer what I want to have happen to all of my possessions and assets in the event of my death? I have one wife and one child, like, isn't there like a default sort of case we can defer to here? <laughs> Maybe the law doesn't work in just terms of common sense, and you know what? Maybe that's actually a good thing that it doesn't, because there's probably some very uncommon situations out there. But to me, it seems like if I die without a will, the court system should just be like, yeah, give like everything to his wife. Uh, and she can share it with the daughter. But then, like, what if, like, some, you know, my nephew or something like that is like, actually, he said that I should have it. Well, then, like, I think they should be like, prove it. D-bag? And if he can't prove it, then just go with... The, um, okay, maybe I'm actually talking myself into the reason why it would be necessary, now that I think about it. But I've been operating... Uh, on the principle of just like the e the best will you could possibly have is not dying. But that's probably naive. That's probably <laughs> it's, it's the sort of thing that you, it works until it doesn't, I suppose. Just can't imagine like why why you need a will in this situation. But you know, I'm I'm not fighting the system. I've long since given up on the system, like fighting back against the system. Now I just seek to operate within the confines of the system. With as little, as much belly aching as possible, but as little actual conflict as is necessary, at least. That's really, you know, you. I'm at the you can't fight City Hall age. Which is, you know, ironic, because I, I think given local politics, City Hall is probably one of the only levels of government that an individual could successfully fight back against. I feel like a lot of local politics, at least in Vancouver, is essentially like filibustering over mundane issues uh, at, a, at a citizen's town hall until the councillors basically decide that, you know, it's not worth being there anymore. They gotta like get home to their kids and stuff like that, so whatever you say, lady. Okay, fine. We won't name it David Suzuki Plaza. What do you want to name it? Cactus Club Grove? Okay, go ahead. I become the keeper. My thoughts exactly. Anyway, would love to know your thoughts on this. <laughs> Rocco Fat City Hall, Rocco Fat Corporate America. You know, you know, Rocco's Modern Life. Yeah. Anyway, it's a show. It's a show. Look it up. Your parents probably watched it. I don't really have anything else to say. The law's, like, kind of funny like that, right? No? Not at all? All right. That's why I gotta start doing stuff again, man. I need more stuff to talk about. Or I need more insane questions, like, would you ever want to live forever? I feel like not wanting to live forever is, like, is a loser's mentality. No offense to anybody out there. <laughs> Please, I just, 
Like, this is my third run of the day. They've all been, like, pretty fun. But we haven't had one that's been, like, insanely overpowered yet. So when you keep giving me detritus, it starts to, starts to make me a little annoyed. I start to take it a little personally. Go ahead. Go ahead. You'll, you'll never hit me twice on the same room. Like, I'm, I'm getting a little fed up with this, uh, this 5.19 damage, 3.62 tiers sort of deal right here. And that's a scary thought because we do also have um, Dark Arts, which is a good spacebar item. And we've got Dark Bum. And we've got some bombs. Like, we got some good stuff going on here. And still, like, my internal power meter is going, like, why is this so stinky? That was just poor play. Nice try. I think I'm basically just saying, give me mom's knife. Would you Would you feel so free to give me mom's knife? This is a beautiful room for me right now. Because we can just do this. And then, I patience, patience, young Padawan. We can do that. I did see the new Ant-Man trailer. Now, I have to be honest with you, this is a joke that is making fun of myself. Because I do, if anything, I've been uh, more out of Marvel since Endgame because the shows are too small. Like, I always want, when it, whenever we talk about something like Star Wars, I'm always like, man, they gotta, forget this Skywalker stuff. They gotta make smaller stories. Why not, why not just do a story that has characters that we don't, even know the names of until it starts and then like it could just be like what's the life of a spice trader like on a planet that's not Tatooine right then for Marvel I'm like throw all that away I never want a story about you know what it means to have been blipped during the era of Infinity War all I want is for every single movie to be like Oh, you thought that guy was the bad guy? Actually, one level deeper into the quantum realm, there's another bad guy who's like that last bad guy who you thought was the worst guy. That's there's it's that guy times a million. So I'm basically, you know, like I'm what I'm making fun of. But I did think about making a tweet that was like um POV, you're on day 75 of shooting your new Marvel movie, and it was just gonna be a green screen, like just a square of green with like the imprint of goggles on it, as if you were looking at it through the other side of a mask. But then I thought like, you know what? People are gonna take this the wrong way. Cause people are gonna say, why don't you, oh, like that thing where the dude presses the other dude's lips shut and says like, shh, let people enjoy things. And I'm like, I'm the enjoyer. I'm the media enjoyer. You're telling, but I'm just, it's simply a joke. Go curved horn, Pog. Okay. He is pogging. Basically, I guess what I'm trying to say is there was a lot of green screen in the trailer, but I guess what did I want them to do? Film it inside of the real quantum realm? That's a good point. Neil deGrasse Tyson watching this episode. Actually, the quantum realm is something that doesn't exist. Theoretically, even if a camera could get small enough to film the spaces in between atoms, when the film returned to normal size to be developed in a one-hour photo laboratory, all the images would no longer resemble what you saw down there. They would look foreign and scary. Help me! Neil deGrasse Tyson. I want to watch a movie with Neil deGrasse Tyson. I want to eat a meal with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Actually, chickens don't have fingers. This is simply a finger-shaped piece of the breast meat. I know, Neil. It's the seventh time you told me that. You're the one who keeps ordering the chicken fingers, man. I got rack of lamb. You keep ordering... We're at a fancy sit-down restaurant, Neil. You keep ordering chicken fingers and fries. Last time I took you out to... Hey, what's the name of that very famous steakhouse in uh, in New York City? <clears throat> this, this, it, it's gonna make the joke better. Famous Steakhouse NYC. No, no, it's not Old Homestead. It's not Gallagher's. It's not Gallagher's. It's not Club A Steakhouse. 
Peter Luger. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Neil, last time I took you out to Peter Luger's Steakhouse, you ordered a grilled cheese. And then you had the audacity to tell me that it's not the cheese isn't actually grilled. It's the bread that's fried in a saute pan. I know! I made you one and then cut the crusts off when you came over to my house. Anyway, this... Neil deGrasse Tyson, everybody. Neil deGrasse Tyson. There he is. Tip your, tip your waiters. I got nothing. I never get any respect. Who's that? Rodney Dangerfield? I didn't even really, like, watch that much this weekend. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. I listen to a lot of music, though. I know it sounds out of the norm for me. Maybe you'd love to know my thoughts on um, some of the contemporary music I listen to. Did you listen to the new Taylor Swift album? Nope. New Carly Rae Jepsen? Nope. Um, but I did listen to Old MacDonald, and let me tell you, he has a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, yes, he does. And I don't know if you're familiar with this, but there are wheels on the bus, and they do be going round and round. And dinosaurs have great big t uh, feet that stomp, stomp, stomp. And dinosaurs have great big teeth that chomp, chomp, chomp. Stomp, stomp, stomp. And a chomp, chomp, chomp. Stomp, stomp, stomp. And a chomp, chomp, chomp. Stomposaurus, stomp, stomp, chomposaurus, chomp, chomp, I'm a saurus, stomp, stomp, you're a saurus, chomp, chomp. You ever, it's, how do I know all the words? I know, it's a pretty complicated song. Did you also know that dinosaurs have great big claws that crunch, crunch, crunch? And you're never going to believe this one. Dinosaurs have great big jaws that munch, munch, munch. Now that we've made 10,000 people turn off this episode, what do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> Anything interesting going on right now? I am pretty stoked for Halloween. Now, this might be like an actual don't jinx it moment, but it's October 25th. I'm almost like 100% healthy again. It'll take maybe another two, three days till I, I sign off on my own clean bill of health. That means I'm going to be healthy for Halloween. Also means in all likelihood my whole family is going to be healthy for Halloween, which means the trick-or-treating is on this year. Now, I will say, we're, we're doing something a little different for trick-or-treating this year. I don't know if this is even okay to admit. We're doing something called Halloween tourism, okay? The last two years, we went out, bought a bunch of Halloween candy. Like, our daughter was zero, and then she was one. That's the way typically it goes, but just to, you know, make it clear. We dressed her up in a costume, but she's not going anywhere. Like, last year at this time, she couldn't even really walk. We're not going to let her crawl around on the street. She might, uh, I was going to say she might fit in too much. That's not what I meant, though. That is not what I meant. But it is a funny uh, mental picture at the very least. Either way, boo! Boo this man! Listen. We bought a bunch of Halloween candy, like, the last two years. Great chaos card there. And then waited for people to come to our house, and nobody came. So this year, we're not waiting around our stinky old house for no kids to come. Instead, we're going to drive uh, out of the city and go into an area where we can actually like, see some kids trick-or-treating. And we're just going to kind of like fall in line. Apparently, we don't live in a, a very trick-or-treat rich area, which I guess makes sense. But uh, I was always surprised we got like literally zero I would have assumed there would be, like, some kids or something like that. I guess I didn't know this because, you know, I've, I've never been a kid in the city. Or a cheap chick in the city, for that matter. But uh, apparently what a lot of city kids do for Halloween is they, when they're really young, they go to the mall. The mall has, like, some days that are Halloween-themed, and then you go around the stores and, like, the staff gives you a little candy bar or something. We're not just driving out to, like, the richest areas of Vancouver to get fun-sized chocolate bars or full-sized chocolate bars or anything like that. We're just literally, like, driving out to a place where people expect trick-or-treaters. Plus, if it strikes you as amoral or even immoral to do it, I'm telling you, my daughter's gonna look very cute with 
they are gonna be it's gonna be worth the chocolate bar to, to see her stroll up as Jesse from Toy Story, okay? She's not really aware of who Jesse is, but my wife's going in an inflatable Rex costume from, from Toy Story. I can't even remember if I'm Buzz Lightyear or Woody, but I'm I'm let's be honest, I'm just there to be like the chaperone for the most part. I'm there to look inside of the candy to make sure that there's no uh, copies of, like, Atlas Shrugged in there. Parents, be careful. I was looking through my kid's candy and somebody shoved a copy of the Fountainhead inside of her full-sized Milky Way bar. Who would do something like this? You, you might think I'm not young enough for this but it's actually i swear to you it's true i was fed the check your candy for razor blades line as a as a kid when i was in like the second grade and i still don't know if for the life of me i've ever seen like a genuine news story about like booby trapped food on halloween or uh or or poison candy or anything like that but I did see the stat that, like, Halloween is actually, like, the most dangerous night of the year to be a child. But it's not because of, like, uh, poison candy. It's because that's when, like, there's the highest number of, like, traffic fatalities or something like that. It's just one of those things where it's, like, it really reinforces the point that, like, mundane danger is not actually perceived as danger. Instead, that's just perceived as life. But novel danger, that's very scary. Everybody get ready for the novel danger. We gotta, I'm putting every single piece of candy through the x-ray before we get home. I'm making sure there's nothing untowards happening here. Meanwhile, yeah kids, I don't see anybody coming. Why don't you, we don't have to wait for the light. Why don't you just jaywalk this one? It's pitch black, you're wearing a Darth Vader costume. Sure, what could possibly go wrong here? Probably also, like, a, a bad mix, because I'm sure it's probably one of, like, the biggest nights of the year for, like, drunk driving. Really seems like a cruel joke. Maybe we'll just stay home this year. No, I don't think so. I think we'll be fine. <laughs> I, I hope. I d it would be very fitting. I did just do, like, the whole episode about, like, I want to live forever. Should my wife remarry after I die? Uh, and then also, I mean, how ironic would it be? If after going off so much on saying, like, don't jinx it, if I actually, if I had only said, if only that you giving your the, the eulogy at my funeral, if only he'd said, don't jinx it, he always thought he was smarter than everybody else. He thought he was too good for saying, don't jinx it. Well, now look at you. Can you give me, like, a good damage upgrade? Am I... I don't want to be, like, whiny or whatever, but, like, I'm just kind of, like, over this, like, this basic damage. I would love to have, like, some good damage. It's just my two cents. I, I recognize briefly we do have a big damage up when we kill bullets with Judas's Shadow, also known as Dark Arts. But I want it, like, all the time. Maybe that makes me, yeah, maybe it makes me entitled now that I think about it. But you know what? I mean, I bought the game. Am I not entitled to just win every game for free without even having to work for it? I was thinking about that because I saw Kony, I mean, this is the Ouroboros of content creation. I saw Kony make a tweet that was a Tim the Tatman clip from his stream where Tim the Tatman... It's really hard to not say Taylor at the end of that, but I'm just a product of my time, okay? Where Tim the Tatman was saying that he's not going to play much Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which, don't even get me started, this is like the seventh Modern Warfare 2 in my life. I don't know where we are anymore in the Call of Duty franchise. It's not a remake of Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare 2. It's just a new Modern Warfare 2. Anyway, like, I, moving on. Um... Because, like, as a streamer, skill-based matchmaking is very annoying. And I actually, like, completely agree. Now, don't get it twisted. I think it, it, all games should be skill-based matchmaking. 
at least all competitive games. But I understand that as a streamer, it's annoying because you just want to talk smack and stomp without having to like work your hardest. But we're also like a very small contingent of the actual player base. And I recognize that although it would be good for me if I was good at a game to never have to play people that were on my skill level and instead just be able to stomp like worse players all day without ever having to face better players in the ranking system that that would be ideal for me as a content creator but also you got to remember those are human beings on the other end of that that are getting shellacked non-stop you know so i think it's bad for the game's ecosystem as a whole and you know what i was thinking because the same thing happened to me in rumbleverse i quit rumbleverse because the skill-based matchmaking eventually got to the point where like every single game i was fighting for my life like there was like a two-week period where i was like having fun and doing well and then every single game, I was matched with people who were like, I mean, I, in your head, it feels like they're so much better than you, but they were probably like roughly your skill level. And, you know, instead of getting like seven easy kills and then having one fair fight, every single fight was like, you know, life or death. It was blood sport, right? So I, I just stopped having fun. But I do think that it's better for the game overall to have people matched up against players of their skill level, even if they eventually get to that point, instead of just constantly requiring new, like, basically, you gotta think of the noobs, right? I don't want a world where the noobs are just there to be, you know, fodder for the, the good players. Anyway, long story short, I was thinking, you know what the ideal outcome is for a game? Every game should be PvP, but the, you should always play against bots. But they should just make the bots believable to the extent that, like, every match feels like you're about to lose. Then you make one incredible play, or a play that you feel is incredible. You win, and you go, wow, it was my own skill that did that. I think that's the secret. And then never play in, like, a tournament or anything like that. I think that's how to make everybody satisfied. We don't need, um... Because people, by the way, I'm, I'm sure there's people leaving a comment right now. Or you could just get better at the game that you're going to play. No, because when you get better at the game you're going to play, you get, like, a day of dopamine uh, where you get some free wins. And then the next day, the rankings calibrate. And now you're playing against people who are at your new level, and you're going to have the same results as at your old level. You know? So, like, getting better in a video game, that's foolhardy, okay? If, if your main goal is maximum satisfaction, or maximizing your results. Now, one thing you could do is divorce your real-world emotions from uh, the reward system of a video game. But, like, I mean, in a fantasy land, sure, that makes sense. But we're talking about the real world here, bucko. Clean your room. I, don't, I would like to rebuke that damage. I don't think we should have taken damage there. Um, so I think that the actual solution, if you, can't, if you can't be mature about it, which I'm not sure if I can, the actual solution is just we need bots that look like they're going to win, but then lose, so that you feel like it was your unique strategy or like a sick headshot you made that made it work. Only you could have done it because your mommy's special boy. But then you don't really know that you might actually be the only player in that game. And you're just playing against algorithms and robots the whole time. Would love to know your thoughts on this. I think that honestly this is one where I think like my friends without kids are like, no. I want to go up against the best competition in the world. I always want to have a reason to get better. Otherwise life is not worth living. My friends with kids are like, that sounds pretty sick. Honestly, I only get like 20 minutes a day uh, to myself. Life's too short to feed another person my hard-earned dopamine like that. I'd rather just go to bed. I'd rather... My friends with kids will be like, video games? Uh, I'd rather just watch The Mole on Netflix. It's crazy. Bro, I'm begging you. Okay, we got mom's knife, but backwards. I am, I'm begging you. Please give me, like, a sick damage upgrade down here. You don't even know, Isaac. You, like, 
This is not NL circa like, you know, 2017. I got options, man. I could be running a Vampire Survivors YouTube episode right here. I could be running back Spelunky 2. I could be doing a Relic search game of Dome Hunter, Dome Keeper. I could be, I could be taking a nap. I could be just free basing Dayquil right now. So you want to give me three runs in a row where we don't get considerable damage upgrades? Like, it's honestly, it's at your own risk. Let's just put it that way, okay? You want to really let all the Isaac heads down out there? They're so happy to finally have, like, a little regularity in the Isaac videos again. People out there haven't gotten sleep in, like, three months. Finally, they're, 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 they're being sent to Neverland. What's... That's where Michael Jackson lived. What is it? Dreamland. That's the one. That's where you dream. <laughs> no, wait, but then James Hetfield says, We're off to Never, Neverland. Oh, whoa. Not good for your throat. That is not good for your throat. So I'm just saying, like, you're on notice. I'm expecting some pretty substantial damage upgrades tomorrow. And if you can't muster that, then then honestly, maybe I'll find a roguelite that can. Maybe I'll find a roguelite that's been programmed to seem difficult, but actually gives you a free win every time. Just as the doctor ordered. Nah, probably not. This seems like a lot of work. I'd rather just watch The Mole on Netflix. Go ahead. Take your time. Hurry up. The choice is yours. Don't be late. As a friend, as a friend, as a known enemy, um, make up your mind, Kurt. Which one is it? Are you a friend or a known enemy? QED. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just, I'm running out of, <laughs> I got too much time and not enough brain, man. Where are you? Stop disappearing. Have some respect. You're not an intellectual. There we go. I'm stretching the freaking screen. I don't want to be here, man. By the way, can I say most unsung item of the last couple uh, rounds? Poke Go has given us like a brimstone baby many times. Especially with, with relatively mediocre damage. I've got to say a big thank you to Poke Go for all your support. Couldn't have done it without you. Stay frosty. Keep up the good work. I will do my best to protect you, as you have done your best to protect me. Like, look at this. I, I chose to take the damage there, rather than get the bomb close to the, the Brimstone Baby. Now, I kind of regretted that on the second pass, but... But alas, that's where we are. That's where we stand. Owned. Now we got two of them! This is not getting out of hand now there are two of them. This is getting in hand! Please, let me find the boss. I'm begging you. This is like the perfect enemy, though, for us. All of our items do well against this enemy. I hope. Please, some shooting. You guys just waiting around, huh? Dude, Broken Modem is also keeping the enemies in place for more of the Brimstone shot. It's kind of a dream come true. It's a very groovy combination. Sorry, I'm getting very nasally. I didn't expect the episode to last quite this long. I was told there would be an intermission. Do you think there's going to be an intermission? Honestly, there better be sandwiches or something. This is turning into like the fire festival. Do you think anybody at the fire festival liked their meal? But they got peer pressured into saying that it was unacceptable? Because everybody else was doing it. There had to have been one idiot at the fire Festival that was like, mm, untoasted Wonder Bread, a slice of iceberg lettuce, and a craft single. That's my favorite. And then everybody was going, this is ridiculous. We were promised, like, um, you know, five-star dining. And they're like, hey, guys, it's not that bad. Come on. New, new guy just dropped. Guy who actually had a lot of fun at the fire Festival. Bro, I don't know how to say it. I just like being outside, okay? Yeah, like, they kind of messed up a couple... Of, look, I don't think they had bad intentions. I just... Look, 
I just love, I got some natural vitamin D. I got to be on a seaplane. What's the problem? Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. See ya.